performance here as he does the four point takeoff roll as he heads out. Now you watch him make a turn. He's upside down. He's got to come this way. So watch him fly the entire length back to downwind in the inverted flight position. And he started to perform in 1964 in a stock Stearman. Then around 1984, after 20 years of flying a stock Stearman, he wanted more power. So he bought this airplane and modified it and made it what we call the Bull Stearman. This is a maneuver that Eddie calls the Wup Shavak. Uh, that's his words, not mine. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anything that he hasn't uh, approved. It is the Italian version of the Lum Shavak. You're gonna see a guy snap roll in Lum Shavak a 450 modified air show steerman more than any other current pilot in North America. And I can't make that statement about the world because I don't see the pilots over in the UK with a candy company sponsored aircraft fly that often, but Eddie really gets with it. All right, pulling up to the vertical on a vertical roll. Now he floats across the top in a zero G environment. A push over the top. Now, Eddie is another guy in a bull steerman. Now, what's a bull steerman? Well, the original steerman was a primary trainer of World War II. It was docile, had a 220 horsepower engine, just had one set of ailerons and no streamlining. It just wasn't necessary. Well, pilots learned that if you double the horsepower, put a big Pratt & Whitney engine on of 500 horsepower, and then you put a cowling on the engine for streamlining and speed. And then you put wheel pants on. Then you did other tricks for aerodynamic streamlining. You changed that docile airplane into a bull. You gave it horns. That's why they call it the bull steerman. A full torque roll. In goes the clutch, shifting into reverse, backing up in his smoke about two lengths of the airplane. And that propeller on the Pratt & Whitney engine starts to growl. You won't see many pilots in a steerman do that. Give Eddie Andrini a big round of applause. He is from Half Moon Bay, California. All right, now he'll be picking up some altitude. What you hear overhead, that high-pitched noise, is actually the tips of the propeller. As they get faster, the tips go towards supersonic flight. When the speed slows down, you'll hear the growl of that 400 50 horsepower, 500 horsepower Pratt and Whitney engine. There is an example of the Immelman turn. One half loop followed by one half roll developed by Max Immelman in World War I as a way to initiate air to air combat or to get the advantage of the enemy in the dogfight arena. Hang on to your hats. Then into the Waldo Pepper outside loop. Hats on, everybody hang on to those papers. From the 1975 motion picture, the great Waldo Pepper. In that movie, Robert Redford's character, Waldo Pepper, attempted to be the first person, the first civilian to do the outside or negative G loop. It was done and documented by a civilian. Fearless Freddie Lunn is said to have done it in 1931 in a Waco taper wing. All right, now you've seen the torque roll. It is grabbing for what Bob Hoover often called a little insurance policy, a little money in the bank, and that is altitude. Now, the entry speeds for you Stearman pilots, Eddie gets with it when it, turn, when it comes to top speed. Quite often, he is pushing 200 miles per hour. Most often, he will get it down at sea level airports. All right, the vertical roll. Now, watch and listen the tail slide. Shh, gets quiet overhead. Ooh, that's gonna hurt on the way down. Bring that engine to life, Eddie Andrini. Give Eddie a big round of applause for the tail slide. And then the tumbling end over end maneuver introduced to us by Ladislav Bezek of the Czech Republic. It's called the Lumshavak in its normal form. It's street slang in the Czech Republic. It equates or translates in many different ways, but quite often they say it is the equivalent of drinking too much plum brandy. You try to walk and you become tipsy and out of control and you end up tumbling end over end and embarrassing yourself.
Now recovering upside down with those two little dots up in the Reno sky. Now right side up again. The technology of this airplane goes back to the 1930s. The most produced biplane in the world documented. There's Eddie in the Lumshevak maneuver done in a steerman style. Yeah, and again, you won't see many steerman pilots executing that maneuver several times throughout their routine. Eddie, like all of the other civilians here, are working with that demon called density altitude. It is a phenomena of a high air, high elevation airport coupled with a warm or hot day. What that does was, is to rob the airplane of its strength. The engine just can't produce the power that it normally does at a sea level airport. And two, the air is so thin that you don't get the lift from the wings. And for that reason, Eddie will add a, several knots of speed to most of these maneuvers, hence the long dive. Pulling to the vertical, and then watch the nose and the tail as the big bull steerman does a little pirouette in the sky. Now, very soon, Eddie is going to present you with a gift, and you know, every gift deserves to be wrapped in a box. He's going to do the very difficult and demanding square loop in the sky. He'll put corners on that loop and create a, a complete square box by pulling a high G pull and making his corners at 90 degrees. On the way up, the hairpin turnaround, allowing him to do a turnaround maneuver without bleeding off much speed and with the help of gravity and full power at all times. All right, there's Eddie going straight up for the box in the sky. Now flying upside down across the top. He'll hold that line. Now it gets exciting as the world comes up to meet him. He'll bend that last corner. And there is your gift in the sky from Eddie Andrini. Give him a big round of applause, if you will. Oh, he's not finished yet. He's got some more tricks. And we're going to talk to him very soon in the cockpit. Watch this now as the speed goes to near zero. The airplane falls out of the sky. The wings have stalled. And a snap roll on the descent, one half snap. All right, now watch this maneuver from Eddie Andrini. It will be the maneuver that was invented by Len Povey in 1936 in Miami, Florida. It is the figure eight in the sky, traced by the smoke with the figure eight laying on its side. The first man to do it by accident was Len Povey in an aerobatic contest, judged by Jimmy Doolittle when he got on the ground. They had never seen this maneuver before. When they asked Povey about it, he said, oh, yeah, that's a Cuban eight because at that time, Len Povey was the chief flying instructor for Batista's Cuban Air Force. And out of respect for Len Povey, we have continued to name that maneuver the Cuban 8 from that day to this, despite our strained relations with that country's dictator. Now let's go to the cockpit and see if we can get Eddie on the air show frequency. Eddie Andrini, are you with us? How you doing, Dan? All right, that was from Eddie in the cockpit. He has the joy of flight. Now do a little... Give me a second here to get turned around. All right, do a little math. Remember, he did his first show in 1964 in a stock steerman, doing maneuvers for 20 years that nobody thought possible, and then doubling all of the performance of this airplane. I think uh, I can deal with my vertical quarter. And then I will come by and take a look at these. All right, he's sizing things up. So 1964, do a little math. This guy, this guy has been doing air shows actively for 47 years. He's got more energy than 10 guys. He's always got a smile on his face. 
In addition to this airplane, he has a Russian Yak-9. In fact, he had two for a while. He called his act Barbarossa. And recently, he has purchased a P-51 Mustang from the automobile executive Bob Lutz, uh, avid Warbird pilot. He's got it out at uh, his overhaul agency. They're doing some work on the engine as he snap rolls the steerman. Not once, you pilots, but a double snap roll in a bull steerman. All right, guys, look. Danny, is, uh, this is a great event here. And I want to thank everybody for having me here. It's uh, just a great show. And now we're going to take a look and see here before I do a, a loop here under the river. All right, we got you. We copy OK, Eddie. And uh, I'm glad to gig this old girl over the extra olive oil last night. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie doesn't use lubricating oil in the engine, in his Pratt & Whitney engine. Because of his Italian heritage, he, in fact, uses olive oil. He just thinks it's better. That's it. It's wonderful. All right. Now look out at the Breitling start finish pylon. Do you see that glittering area out there? Do you see the crew members on the ground? They are holding poles 22 feet high, a little wider than the wingspan of Eddie's aircraft. Now, he may, based on the wind, attempt to do something with that ribbon. Safety, however, is paramount. Now, one of the things that really blows me away that I think requires more skill, see the wings going back and forth? It is a very, very rough day. Now, watch this. He doesn't see the ribbon. He's going to loop around it. Watch this now, counting 1-1,000, one, 2-1,000, one, 3-1,000. He is just not going to get the lift to come back around today because of the density altitude and circle that ribbon. Thank you, Eddie Andrini, for breaking that off. Now, let's see. Let's see what we're going to get. Air Force, the ribbon. All right. Thank you, Eddie Andrini. I wanted you to see the wings of his airplane as he was approaching that ribbon. Did you see them going up and down, the tips moving around? The air is very turbulent out there. We got low to the ground right side up, and he said, this will never work for an attempt to break a ribbon in the interest of safety. The push we make through the International Council of Air Shows to be responsible to you, Eddie Andrini, one of our great leaders and recipient of the highest award within the International Council of Air Shows, a sword of excellence, shows to do the right thing and to not attempt a dangerous stunt in this particular environment. I want you to know, most of the time, about 98% of the time at air shows, including yesterday, he did it without a problem. But today, crosswind conditions and burbling air and he's going to be setting up for a landing. So uh, on behalf of Eddie Andrini Air Shows, we'll see him in the air with a P-51 soon. For his great example, all of you race and air show fans, give Eddie Andrini a big Reno round of applause. Thank you, Eddie. You are our hero.